Well, hello everyone and welcome to the Autodesk Robot Structural Analysis Professional 2022 tutorial brought to you by the Civil Engineering Essentials channel. In this video, we are going to talk about circular and spherical grids and how to use those to model circular beams and circular slabs or floors. To start with, I'm going to select the 3D building design template by clicking on the template and of course, robot loads me the template. Uh, let's say that we want to model the following structure and you can see that our structure is comprised of a very simple uh, slab five by three meters surrounded by four beams and a half circle that is one meter in radius now this is once again a simplified structure to serve as a proof of concept there will be full projects later once we have established some basics in autodesk robot now i'm gonna go to view first of all and gonna select the grid here and simply draw my first grid, which is going to be the grid upon which my rectangular slab is going to be defined on. So in X it's 0 and 5, in Y it's 0 and 3, and in Z I'll leave it as is. You apply and get this grid. Now this is 5 by 3. Now I'm just going to draw on the ground because the objective of this video is to show you how to draw. I will be explaining what story 1 means in the future videos. So to model the floor, I'm going to simply click on the floor command here. And this was explained in a previous video linked above. I'm going to model a shell structure and my thickness for that structure is going to be a constant 200 millimeters. So I'll click on constant, basically thickness 200 millimeters. I'll add this thickness, I'll close this window, and now I can select my thickness from here. And it's going to be rectangular, so one, two, three. Let's put some supports on that. And the supports are on the corner, so well, let's just quickly go to geometry, nodes, and define four nodes in those four corners. To go to supports, click on pinned, apply, and now I have my pins applied on all those elements. All right, fantastic. Now, how can I draw a half circle slab? Now, there are multiple options to do that. You can switch and check on the object arc stuff here, which is nice or contour, or you can define a circular grid and then draw your slab on that grid. Now, how can you define a circular grid? Well, you go to the grid command, open it, and you can see that you can actually switch between Cartesian and cylindrical grids. Now, please notice that you have a current grid that is called structural axis. So if you modify anything, you will be modifying your current grid. Now, this is bad because we want to keep our current grid. So before I do anything, I'm going to click on new to open a new grid and say, this is my cylindrical grid. All right, and apply this. So now I have two grids. Uh, to know how many grids you have, you can click on axis manager and you see you have two grids, the cylindrical grid and the structural axis grid. If you want to modify the old grid, you click on it. If you want to modify your new grid, you click on it. All right, this grid is a cylindrical grid, meaning that it has a radial part and it has an angle part. Now, if you, for example, blindly say the radius is 0 and 1, and the angle is, for example, 0, 30, 60, 90, 20, 150, 180, and hit apply, you see something strange. You see that your cylindrical grid seems to be on the origin, which is not what we want. We want our grid to be somewhere here. So how can I do that? Well, you need to switch the origin of your grid from the global origin to this point. Now, to be able to click this point, you either have to enable snap options and try select the point. Now, it's not able to be selected. The easiest one is, for example, to go, first of all, I'm going to apply, to go to your structural axis and it define a grid at 1.5 at the middle point and add this. If you apply now, you have a middle point, which is possible to be caught. If you go back to your cylindrical grid, you can see that you can now select this point to be your origin. And if you click on apply, well, the grid has moved to the new origin however it still seems to be odd this is not what the this is not the half circle we want well the reason why the half circle seems to be odd is because our angle was defined from 0 to 180 uh, robot defines angles to be counterclockwise positive so i should start with negative 90 and end at positive 90 so my angles here are wrong so i'll delete all and start with negative 90 60 now, an easier way to do that is to simply say my starting position is negative 90. I want to have six splits and I want the split to be 30 degrees. So if I do that and add, you can see that my entire system has been added immediately. If I apply now, you can see that your half circle 
works perfectly. <clears throat> so well, that's how you define a half circle in the grid. Now, how can you draw the half circle? Well, this is an easy task because it's very similar to how you draw slabs, basically. So if you click on floors and now select contour, you will have to follow the contour step by step. One, two, three, four, and so on. This is your circular slab. Please notice that the accuracy of the slab increases the more subdivisions you have here. However, such a subdivision is, in my opinion, enough. So we have our circular slab now. Let's click on beams. And basically, we want to reinforce concrete beams. We want the section to be 250 by 450. Let's hit on add. And there was another cross section, which was 250 by 300, which is the secondary beam, and add that. So now I have two cross sections. I want to select the main beam cross section and draw my main beams, which is this one and this one. And now I will select my secondary beam and draw my secondary beams, which is this one and this one. Instead of clicking one, two, three, four clicks, I just hit on drag, which makes my drawing much faster. So I'll just simply click on the points and it will drag along the beam. Now I'm done drawing. Maybe you don't see the beam, so if you enable on the cross section, you can now see the beam. <clears throat> All right, so this is the modeling part of my structure. Now what about the loading part? Well, in this case, I'm going to make load cases and load combinations. For loads, I'm going to have two cases, dead load and live load. And let's click on that, on the load combination button. And you can see that you can define load combinations. They can be dead, they can be alive, wind, snow, seismic, whatever you want. I want to have a dead load and a live load. So let's define a dead load and define a live load. So we have our two cases now. And we can, well, click on loads load table to see that the own weight has been added accordingly. Now let's say that we want to add loads to the slab, now, which is basically dead load and lift load. Now the own weight or the self weight of the slab has already been calculated and included. We still need to apply the superimposed dead load and the live load. Now this is something the structural engineer calculates. All right, so let's apply this superimposed dead load. Well, the first thing is I need to select the load. But before I do that, if you select the load, you see that the case that is active now is live load, live load 1. How can I switch that? Well, obviously, if you click on that, it doesn't switch. However, if you click on here, you can see all the load cases that you have defined. There is a dead load, there is a live load, and there is simple cases, which is the envelope, and we will talk about envelopes later. So if you click on dead load, you can see that it switched to dead load, and now whatever you apply is being applied on the dead load. <clears throat> if you switch to live load, then whatever you apply of loads is going to be on the live load. So okay, I'm going to switch on dead load, and I'm going to go to the surface and say my, my load, my superimposed dead load is 8 kilonewtons per meter square. I add it on everything, and that's it. I'll apply it. What about live load? Well, I just simply switch my load case to live load and apply another force. Let's say that by mistake I have applied my live load to the dead load case. So I'll just now do a mistake. I will go to the surface load and apply a live load of let's say 3.5 kilonewtons per meter square. Now I'm applying a live load but however I made a mistake and I forgot to switch my case. Now the correct way is to switch the case and apply the loads here. But let's say that I made a mistake and I applied the loads here. So I'm intentionally now applying live loads on the dead load case. If you open the loads, you see two loads like this. If you go to live load, you don't see anything. So I realized later that I messed up and made a mistake. Okay, so how can you fix that? Well, you can, of course, delete the load and redraw them. Or you can go to loads, load table, and see the load you have defined here, which was your uh, live load, which is the 3.5 in PZ. And you see the case here is dead load. If you click on that, you can open the drop-down menu and select live load, which means now that this load is applied on the live load. If you go out now and take a look, well, let's close the load table first, and take a look, you see now that live load magically has new loads on it. I mean, in the beginning, it was two loads on the dead load, but after we fix that, the dead load has its load, and the live load has its own load. You can see that everything seems to be perfectly fine. All right. To perform a combination, you can click on code combinations, which will generate automatic combinations for you, or you can do it manually. So, for example, you can go to load manual combination and basically say that you want the factor to be 1.2 multiplied by the dead load <coughs> plus 1.6 multiplied by the live load or whatever your code says. If you do that, hit apply. Now you have a combination here that is combination one. 
you see those values, what is this 9.6 and 5.6? Well, those are the values multiplied by the factors. For example, the dead load was 8. If you multiply 8 by 1.2, you see 9.6. The live load was 3.5. If you multiply 3.5 by 1.6, you see 9.6. So, well, if you run your analysis now and click on run, well, there seems to be an error and there is an overlapping member or something. So, there is a problem in our calculation. <clears throat> so, now, there will be a different video for all the possible errors you can see in Autodesk Robot. However, let's deal with this one right now. So, I will not continue my analysis and there is an error and I don't know where it is. So, to discover where the error is, you click on analysis and click on verification. If you click on verification, you can see that the error is here and if you double click on the error, Double click on that, you see that Autodesk Robot highlights you the location of the error. It seems to be here. Now, if you remember correctly, when I drew the beams like this, I drew a beam backwards. And this is a problem because now I have two beams on the same location. I have one beam going forward and one beam going backward. Okay, so to fix that, I first of all need to know where my overlapping beams are. If I click on member numbers, you can see that there are a member number 6 and member number 7 here. Now, there should be only one member number. There are two now, which means that there are two beams on one line, which is wrong, by the way. And to even prove this, if you go to top and click like this, select, you select actually two beams, not one. You are selecting beam number 6 and beam number 7. Now, this is a mistake, and I have to solve this mistake. And it's very easy, actually. You can basically select one of the beams and delete them. So, if I, for example, click on 6 here, or simply hit the delete button. It's eliminated now. If I show the sections, you can see where the mistake was. You see, 6 was actually innocent, and 7 was the culprit. So, that's the reason why there was a mistake. Okay, now to fix the mistake, I will just delete both of them like this and redraw my beam, which was beam number 6, using the secondary beam, uh, secondary beam properties, and apply it. And now, if I run the analysis, everything should be fine, because the overlapping has been solved. So if I click on Run, no problems, no errors, everything is fine, and the solution is there. Now you can start looking for the solution. If you click on Results, Maps, you can see, for example, the moment in X. Of course, the moment of X is a mess for those elements. Why? Because the X axis for each of those elements is different, as you can see, which means that the results here seem not to make any sense. Now, to make sense of the results, you should unify the X axis of all those plates. You can do this either by clicking on geometry properties or simply by saying, my direction is in the Cartesian X axis. And if you apply that, now it makes sense. And you see, it's kind of homogeneous moment. Now, there is a dedicated video talking about the results for finite element shells and floors, and you can see the link above. However, uh, I just want to mention in this case that the results you see here are for the combination one, which is the ultimate limit state. And, uh, well, you can select a different type of case, and you can see that the results update accordingly. Of course, the highest results are for the combination because it has the highest forces, usually. All right. So, yeah, that's basically it. And that is how you model curves in Autodesk Robot. And you have seen during the robot that there was a mistake. And I have shown you how you can detect and find this mistake and eliminate it. Of course, there are a lot more mistakes that you can uh, encounter while analyzing on Autodesk Robot. And there will be a separate video talking about those mistakes in the future. That's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have enjoyed the video and find it beneficial, please consider liking, sharing, subscribing, and commenting. This is the Civil Engineering Essentials channel, and we will catch you in another video.